Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Compline for tonight, Wednesday, January 6th, the day of the Epiphany. Tonight I'll be taking Compline out of the Book of Common Prayer, and you can follow along with me at home. It's on page 127 if you have a prayer book at home, or uh, if you go to bcponline.org or onlinebcp.org, one of those two, but I think it's the first. But if you plug in or if you type in BCP online, um, you'll get to the prayer book and you can, um, you can follow along with that, on that. But anyway, Compline begins on page 127 of the Book of Common Prayer. Tonight is the Epiphany, and I'll be reading instead of one of the normal Compline readings, I'm going to read the Gospel lesson for the day of the Epiphany, and I'll say, have a little reflection on the Epiphany as well. So welcome and thank you for being here. Beginning on page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed by what we, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Continuing on page 129 with Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. And continuing on page 131 with page 134, with Psalm 134. Behold, now bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is the Gospel reading for the day of the Epiphany. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born a king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them whether the Messiah, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, 
frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And I want to share a brief reflection for you from the Reverend Ann Carol Fowler of the Diocese of Massachusetts about the day of the Epiphany. It's entitled, Three Mysterious Men, An Epiphany Reflection. Magi are star readers, folks believed to have special powers to manipulate the fate that the stars foretell, and were highly valued in ancient times as prophets and advisors to rulers and councils. Of course, the so-called birth narratives of Matthew and Luke are add-ons to the basic gospel narrative of Mark, which is the earliest. The narratives are intended to emphasize the miraculous nature of Jesus' birth, his exalted lineage, his humble beginnings, and the astonished, worshipful response of all who were privy to the event. In other words, they are fiction and, as such, have symbolic meaning and intent. Why a manger and a stable? Because it's the lowliest place, and the shepherds in Luke's version are among the lowliest possible receivers of the good news of peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So then the Magi, the wise men, known in, known in Luke's version as the three kings, represent a very high order of society. So the Magi are high-end visitors to Bethlehem. What else can we say about them? They are pagans. They travel a long distance. They bring valuable gifts to Jesus, and they do not obey Herod in the end although he has commissioned their journey. They are warned by a dream that fulfilling their mission would be undesirable and presumably dangerous to the new baby and his family. <clears throat> so they have some kind of conversion experience and return home in secret. Ultimately, they are mysterious strangers from and in and strange a strange world. I come from and live in a sacramental tradition, one that values mystery rather than being repelled or alarmed by it. The sacraments are infused with mystery. The Eucharist, baptism, what's clear and final about these rites? If you know, you're way ahead of me. And so I admire these Magi. They are adventuresome and persistent. They travel a long distance to find something foreign. The Gospel tells us, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And while perhaps they sense something miraculous, they may also have been very weary after a long, arduous, and probably dangerous journey. They are both open-minded and reverent. They recognize the unlikely holiness of a Jewish baby in the humblest of circumstances, and they bow down to worship him. They value, I infer, compassion over obedience. We know from, the, from beyond this gospel segment that Herod planned to, and did, kill many infants in a futile attempt to eliminate the prophesied Messiah. Presumably that was, what, that was what the Magi learned in their dream, and that was why they did not return to Herod and inform him of Jesus' whereabouts. Above all, they dwell in the realm of mystery. They have mysterious powers to begin with. They set off on a mysterious journey and they encounter the most mysterious birth ever known. And that is the life we enter into as followers of Jesus, a life of mystery, a life of wonder, a life at times of overwhelming joy.
continuing with our service on page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are weary by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite you now and later tonight to pray, to share prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, silently or aloud. I give thanks for St. Thomas's and the St. Thomas family. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have sent your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless us and keep us. Amen. <laughs>